All right, guys. <laughs> we are live. We are live. Yes, I'm literally recording this right after the uh, network basic Linux, but it's coming out next week. Yeah, I'm using my actual Mac camera because it's super dark in here and my light source is here. So that's why it looks different from the live stream. But yeah, let's get into it. All right. Ethical hacking. Thank you guys for coming to this course. You know, we're just having fun. Now, actually, <laughs> today's course is going to be super fun. Um, it's going to be off the rail. This, this is in jest. All right. It's in jest. Nothing crazy or serious and stuff like that. But we're going to talk about a topic. And what's crazy about this topic is that I had this in my mind to like a week prior. I literally just saw the Reddit post this morning and it's like blowing up. I'm like, yo, um, yeah, I need to hop on this. All right. So let me actually pull up the Reddit article, get myself situated. Man, I'm liking this lighting. Oh, mm, mm. <laughs> Killing the game. All right. All right. Um, oh, shoot. I think I lost the Reddit post. Don't worry. I'll find it. Let me show you. Oh, you know what I should do right now? I'm tripping. Hold on. I got to make sure the sound quality is good on my end. Let me check. Double check real quick. Watch, rewatch the stream. Let's see. Double check real quick. Watch, rewatch the stream. All right. All right. We're good. We're good. <laughs> all right. All right. So that actually, I should, I should drag that over here. Make sure. Hey, we're building it while we fly it. All right, all right. There we go. There we go. There we go. Man, I haven't used this camera in like five months. Golly. You guys remember when I last used this camera on my blue team versus red team video? Um, all right. Let me get to the article I wanted to show you guys. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Right here. Actually, not an article, but a Reddit post. Oh, please don't tell me they got rid of it. Hold on. Hold on. This was a really cool Reddit post, and it, it just inspired me. Yeah, yeah, there we go, there we go. How many upvotes? It has 375 up though, upvotes. So let me let me start sharing screen now. All right. Present, and I'm, I'm on my Mac. All right, so we'll see. Share screen. And I already had the lesson done and everything. I just want to open up with this. Right here, right here, right here. Allow. So let's see if you guys can see that. Man, dude, this Reddit post is crazy. <laughs> this crap is crazy, man. Oh my god. Um, yeah, let's get let's just dive into it, man. Why do other cybersecurity professionals treat pen testing like dark arts? Guys, I got the slides, I got the class ready. Just hold on. I want to dissect this Reddit post. I gotta dissect it before we go into it. Let's read on. I've been working as a penetration tester for some years now after doing security engineering slash AppSec for a few years before that. I work with incident responders, engineers, GRC folks, really the full security org at, the, at some point. The amount differs depending on the group, but pretty much every other security group we present to always has this air of, wow, what do you guys do? That, that's incredible. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I mean, ask the non-IT folks. Explain ethical hacking to them. What? You're hacking? Oh my, oh, my God. Trust me, when I travel down south, chop it up with the folks and tell them, yeah, you know, I just pulling this. What? Wait, wait, what's the penetration? To That's illegal. You shouldn't be doing that. Hey, calm down. I have permission. We have a scope. We have an agreement. Calm down. Dude, I'm telling you guys, <laughs> this is from like the end user, like the, how can I say it? Just a non-IT perspective or non-security perspective. What? Right? Why do people think this is? I'm curious as well. After, you know, pwning, shout out to TCM Academy, pwning some of their boxes and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, this is cool. I get, I get the gist of it. I get the gist of it. At first, I'm like, but no, no. Okay, run the MAP scan. Okay, check open port. Okay, I, I got it. I got it. I'm sorry if I'm looking over here. The camera's here. The stream is here. And the... <laughs> I got a I got a crazy setup, guys. Let me let me get let me get a drink of water. Let me get, you you want to you want a toast now? Uh, I think this is gonna be a good stream. It's gonna be a really good stream. Yeah, we're gonna run through these slides, talk about some cybersecurity news presently. Hopefully, run through a try hack me lab if time permits. We see we're just freestyling. We're just freestyling. It's cool. All right, you got, hopefully you guys watch that Linux course. 
uh, yesterday, if you're seeing this today, um, went really in detail with it. History of Linux, go watch that. All right. Why do people think this is? Pen testing isn't some crazy hard skill. I lack a ton of deep knowledge. I know each each of these people have their own domains. Like, I would love to have some networking knowledge. I know I couldn't fill a GRC role if my life depended on it. But I don't see those people as wizards. Okay, that's the theme today. Dark arts. All right, sorcery. Matt, oh my God, what is he doing? He's bringing, he's owning that box. We're going to talk about that, okay? With unobtainable knowledge. If you guys came from my uh, ethical hacking pen test history, you would know that the training's out there to become an ethical hacker. You got TCM Academy. You got um, Pen200, sorry if they updated from Offsec, uh, Hack the Box Academy. There's many courses out here to help you become a penetration tester, okay? Let's read on. Hacks and exploits are really the basis for everything we're trying to prevent. As a pen te- as a pen tester, I'm somewhat perplexed by how new and amazing this all seems to other security professionals. So it's not just the non-IT dudes, other security professionals, the, your threat hunters, digital forensic guys, app site guys. What? Huh? You just pwned that? You just hacked that? Oh my god. Now, let's see the comments, man. I really like the title of this thread. I love the summary. Let's look at the comments. Guys, we're going to milk this Reddit post. All right, if you're watching this on the playback, I mean, feel free to skip. But we're going to be milking this post before we get into the lesson because this is the basis of the lesson, guys. Dark arts, all right? It's pen testing dark arts. Is it sorcery? All right, what's going on? What are you doing with that? (laughs) What are you doing with that Kelly box? Stop. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> All right. Let's read on. Hopefully, you guys can... I should probably zoom this in. I should probably zoom this in. Let me see. Um, let me try this. Okay. Hopefully, you guys can see it this way. Sorry about that. Pen testing seemed amazing to me when I was... when I can't read. Pen testing seemed amazing to me when I was early on in the career. That sexy stuff. No one gets a kid excited to enter the cyber field by telling them how amazing compliance artists are. So that's a joke. Now it's become like any other service that we leverage. We run them. We generate paperwork from the results. We have to fix stuff. On to the next problem. Maybe I'm just feeling burnt out lately, but it has lost some of its luster. Guys, is this true? Chat, uh, type in the comment section. Has pen testing lost its luster? Has the dark arts faded? All right. Are there any wizards out there? <laughs> are, are, is there anyone practicing pen testing? Let us know. He said it lost his luster. You know, I'm not going to lie. You know, when I was studying for it recently, I, you know, I think it was cool and stuff like that. But, you know, hey, it, it's, it seems pretty usual. All right. Pen test. Write your findings. Repeat. You know, I'm not crapping on it. I got some buddies in there, you know. But, hey, let me know. I mean, I want to hear some feedback. Has it lost its luster? <laughs> Definitely. Let's, wait, wait, wait. Definitely sound burnt out and jaded. So people are saying, hey, you're jaded. You're burnt out. Stop. It's still got its luster. It still shines. All right, stop it. Pen test is still the sexy role in cyber. No one thinks to make a movie about GRC. Now, speaking of movies... Just a sidebar real quick. Are you guys familiar with uh, Mr. Robot? All right. Now, Mr. Robot, it's a... I mean, you could read the title right here. Young antisocial computer programmer Elliot works as a cybersecurity engineer during the day. But at night, he's a vigilante hacker. Dude, pen tester. All right. Let me see if that's a trailer for this, uh, for Mr. Robot. Uh, Let's see. Let's see. Okay, oh, oh, God, yeah, this came out. PC, let's watch. I want to watch this one right here. Uh, let's watch this one right here. We're going to open this up incognito. All right, let's watch this one. Play the trailer, just in case you guys don't know about Mr. Robot. Fair use. Fair use. Let me get myself off the screen. Oh, 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 shoot. I realized I'm not even sharing. I'm so glad I caught that. See, I made that mistake last stream. Let's reshare. Share screen. Woo! So glad I caught that. Um, right here, Mr. Robot. 
All right, you guys got the gist of Mr. Robot and everything. Let me get myself off the screen so you guys go watch the trailer. All right, fair use, fair use. Let's watch. something else another symbol to destroy more people to save this is an endless war what you're about to do is crossing the line i too little late for that don't you think oh that was the final season <laughs> oh shoot i didn't that. What happened to you? All right, we're done. But no, that is Mr. Robot. Uh, uh, a lot of cybersecurity professionals vouch for that series. They say it's pretty cool, it's pretty dope. Wrong overlay. They say it's a really dope series and stuff like that. So, guys, check it out. I have yet to watch it, to be honest. I mean, look at the ratings, guys. Come on. Fair use. And this is the uh, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, let me actually get myself out the thing about the summary of it. Elliot, a brilliant but highly unstable young cybersecurity engineer and vigilante hacker, becomes a key figure in a complex game of global dominance when he and his shadowy allies try to take down the corrupt corporation he works for. Wow. Yo, this sounds like some Edward Snowden stuff. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys know? But good stuff, good stuff. Um, not going to spoil. So we're going to get off that. Wow. Okay. Close that. So we're back here. Okay. Let me fix the stop screen sharing. And we're going to go back to the Reddit post, man. Yeah, this is a good stream so far. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm not going to lie. After I finished the Linux stream, I was tired as heck. This is literally like two hours after that stream. Yes, believe it or not. Um, and I know the camera quality was kind of like off. That was really dark arts. If you guys look at the camera quality, that was really dark arts. Well, the camera's right here. If you guys look at the camera quality, that was really dark arts in the Linux one. All right, so let's go back to the Reddit post. Um, all right, there we go. Whew. All right, all right, all right. Um, do I want to look at the replies? Let's see, let's see. And uh, we're just get that. Let's see what else we got. I know there was some funny comments here. <laughs> let's see what they got. Uh, let's see. We do. And, you know, this is a cybersecurity guy. Like, hey, what? I don't, I don't find penetration testing sexy. What? Are you serious? We do? Do we? We do? Hey. Hey, look at this. We do not. Cryptologists, on the other hand. Now, he's basically saying those are the guys you got to, like, whoa. Bow, you know, quote, unquote, bow down to. Oh, shoot. Whoa. They're doing some dark art stuff. Whoa, watch out. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, oh, look, they got more. The only people I truly bow down to are the threat hunters. Once they start pulling up their own tools and processes, they win. They're way cooler than me and deserve their salaries. I am just a GRC brainlet, and most the most I could do is just rub my two brain cells together and complete some CTF challenges. So making me impressed isn't too difficult. Wow. <laughs> that's an interesting username seamstress guys dude this is a this is a pretty litty uh thread so far not gonna lie oh at the look at this one at the in-depth level it does get crazy dark arts okay all right we are we going on a witch hunt are, are these guys practicing dark arts or certain what are we doing <laughs> let's get to it i have seen some unbelievable things that blow my mind at its most basic level, it... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I, I see this a lot in Reddit posts and pen testing. Posts. I gotta read this again. I gotta read this again. At the in depth level, it does get crazy dark art. It gets crazy dark arts, bro. I have seen some unbelievable things that blow my mind. At its most basic level, 
it's just a dude running a Nessa scan. <laughs> Wait, we're not crapping out penetration tester here. That's not what that's not what we're gonna do here. All right. This is leading up to today's class. Bear with me. <laughs> Let's read this. Standard pen testing. It's like getting your car's oil change and towels rotated. Valuable, but a commodity. My last employer found the cheapest provider who could do a decent job and went with them. Thanks for the report. See you next time. But I have also worked at a firm with an internal red team that pwned stuff in the craziest ways possible. Mind-blowing stuff. They had the mysterious. Oh, sorry. They had the mystique OP talks about. So... <laughs> That so you guys pretty much get the gist. I don't have to keep going down and down. You guys get the gist and stuff like that. You know, pen testing is an exotic job in the field. Ask anybody about it. Everyone wants to become a pen tester. I want to pwn some boxes. I want to hack ATMs in the bank. But are they really practicing dark arts? Is it really sorcery? Are they really like whoa what? Or is it just vulnerability? A Nessa scan? We're gonna see in this uh, lesson today. All right, and so on and so on. Man, this is a juicy, juicy article. By the time you guys are going to see this, probably going to be a week old, so you guys could come revisit and check out the top comments. But no, no, that's that's what we're going to start off with. Now let's get into today's lesson. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. All right, whoo, man. Almost got watery for a sec. All right, uh, let's share screen. Uh, share screen. And we're going to share uh, today's lesson. Let's see. Where is it? I think this is it. Let me know if you guys see it. Bam. Ethical hacking, digital dark arts. All right. I should probably move myself to the side. But let me see how it comes out. I mean, it comes out pretty good on the playback. So we're going to see. But yeah, this is today's lesson. Yes. We got a lesson. We were, we're not just going to read Reddit posts all day. Did you guys really think that? Come on. Come on. Hmm. All right. Now, we got a game plan today. Um, I'm going to come up and do it. We're going to open up with, you know, we're, I'm going to have to teach you the sorcery. Yep. I'm going to help you get the dark arts. <laughs> Stay tight. You're wizard, Harry. So we're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to watch some cybersecurity, read some cybersecurity news, latest trends and stuff like that. Keep you guys updated. And, oh, potentially I could add this. Um, we're going to add a... I want to give you guys some advice, especially for those coming into the field and so on and so on. I'm, If you guys don't know, I'm currently not in the field right now. Going through some interviews. Hopefully, I'll get in the field pretty soon. If not, I have backup plans to make a career sw uh, switch. So we'll, we'll see. But I have some advice from a 20-year practicing cybersecurity manager. I'm my current employer right now. And I think you guys are going to be valuable. You guys are going to find this valuable. Okay? And then lastly, yeah, we're going to close off with just more Reddit threads and comments and stuff like that and just go over our sources so that's pretty much the lesson plan for today so let's get started all right ethical hacking digital dark arts you guys ready let's get it so table of continents <laughs> a content we're gonna talk about the darkness yep it's gonna get dark in here okay <laughs> we're gonna talk about the darkness second we're gonna learn the arts all right how do you learn the dark arts Okay, how, how do you do it? This, this, you know what this reminds me of? Sidebar. Um, you guys play Destiny. What's that ah, Destiny magic character? You got what's that character in Destiny with the magic? Um, damn it, damn it, damn it! I'm forgetting the name. You guys know what I'm talking about? Bun. What is it? Uh, I, I can't. Was it Warlock? Was it Warlock? Warlock character. We're gonna teach you guys how to be a Warlock. All right. And then we're going to teach you how to observe the dark. All right. So if you got the shouting guns, we're going to teach you that. And lastly, we're going to close out with sources. Okay. All right. So let's get into it. Get ready to enter the darkness. All right. And <laughs> if you guys look at the thumbnails, you know, that's a guts. That's guts from the uh, manga Berserk. Very great manga. I mean, it may be controversial nowadays, but I find it dope and stuff like that. Some good stuff. Guts, you know, he, he's in the darkness. You know, he has to fight in the darkness. So as a pen tester, you're going to be fighting in the darkness too. All right. And we're going to talk about that. Dark arts. What the heck is dark arts? Look at that image. That's hilarious. Dark arts is a colloquial term for techniques or methods 
which involve deception or manipulation of others or oneself into believing things for non-truth seeking reasons. In summary, techniques or practices that are regarded as mysterious or dishonorable. Guys, do you remember what that Reddit thread guy, the Reddit uh, commentator said? He said, pen testing has mystique. All right, this is dark arts, <laughs> okay? This is dark arts in the flesh. So when and as we open up with, that's why I had to open up with that Reddit thread to, what, what, what do you mean? Some people find them, yes, some people find them mystique. I mean, ask your kin, ask your family, ask your grandmother, hey, um, you want to see me pwn a box with my Kali Linux machine? She's not going to know what the, she might think you're, pra you're practicing sorcery. What? With a blue dragon? What are you going to do with that? Dark arts, okay? So in summary, these are techniques and practices that are regarded as mysterious. Now, for those, you know, trying to break into the penetration field, which, which is an advanced career within cybersecurity. It's very niche. As you saw the Redditor, he came from a SOC engineer role, AppSec role, many years before that, before he jumped into uh, penetration testing. So it's going to take some years. It's going to take some years and techniques. And I'm not going to go over all the training material, Not probably none. We talked about it in our, what's it, the last stream or a couple of streams ago on pen test history about training platforms you can use to get your dark arts up. All right. <laughs> if you want to learn some sorcery and penetration testing. Okay. Let's move on. The internet is wild. <clears throat> now I first heard this phrase by network Chuck shout out to network Chuck, amazing charisma, beautiful thumbnails and just energy. The dude's amazing. I, I mess with him. The internet is wild. You know, what does he mean by that? You know, before I even read this, you know, article or anything, the internet's a dangerous place. Yep. You have access to many wicked content, crazy stuff. You go on certain websites and view egregious stuff. You could get hacked. You could lose your identity. You could be fish, social engineer, a lot of stuff. We talked about that <clears throat> in the last stream about APTs. Okay. You see what these guys are doing over the internet. The internet's wild. It's a dangerous place. Now, if you want to boycott the internet, that's not going to work today. If you want to go back to selling uh, letters with your forever stamp on the top right corner of your envelope, licking it, putting it in your mailbox, flipping the red flag, those, I mean, you could go ahead, but that's not effective. That's not effective anymore. You're going to have to come to the internet. You have to join the dark side. Okay. <laughs> well, let's read on. Um, you are here learning to defend yourselves against that which cannot easily be seen. Guys, we talked about APTs. They cannot easily be seen. They can hide in established networks for months. And you think you can find them out, sniff them out? Mm, no, they can't easily be seen. Dark creatures abound on the internet. There's some dangerous stuff on the internet. Guys, be careful. Okay. These shadowy cybernauts seek to prey on us by accessing and damaging computers and networks. Mm -hmm. We talked about that in a couple network uh, basic show about network security and concepts. We went over security attacks that attackers might use against your business. All right. DDoS. OK. And all these other stuff. DNS poisoning to what? Harm your network. Damage computers. They revel. And their ill-begotten spoils, guys. <laughs> we, see, we we see what's going on with these hackers. They enjoy it. They love they love ruining people's life. They love stealing money. They love that stuff. But when they get locked up, like Pom Pom Purin, okay, now they're really gonna get spoiled in a jail cell, okay. So enjoy it while you can. APTs, hackers, and stuff like that. It's not going to last. It's just a moment. Just a moment. And your business, personal, financial, or even medical information, and once they have it in hand, the damage has been done. I mentioned this in a couple streams ago. I had my identity stolen when I was a young child. This happens. Guys, that's a lot of stuff on the internet that happens. I won't go into it, but I suggest you guys watch the stream. Um, damn, what was that stream? Let me actually go to my course catalog. I had this one stream. Let me, let me see if I can find it. It was, oh, yeah. Ethical hacking, explain, blue and slow, operation security. Gosh, I forgot about that stream. I'm just pushing out so much content. That stream talks about the dangers 
the dangers uh, their actors are using on the internet. They 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 using what sex sex extortion on children. All right, um, stealing identities. This is crazy stuff, man. Stealing personal, financial, or even medical information, guys. We talked about that in the last class, last stream about APTs and their reasoning. Okay, guys, you gotta be you gotta be careful out here. Real talk. And once they have it in hand, the damage has been done. Yep. And I'm gonna pull up some statistics about you know damages from cyber attacks. They cost companies thousands, if not millions. Okay. And these are same companies that are you know trimming off their security department. I you know I'm not the CFO. I don't know what's going on up there, but it makes you go hmm. Okay, we're trimming off our staff, our security team. If we do get hit by a breach, who's going to protect you? Are we using a third party? Are we transferring the risk to an insurance? What are we doing? All right, I worry about these businesses, especially healthcare. Side story, um, currently working in healthcare right now, I was talking to one of the cybersecurity managers and just basically picked the, his brain about, you know, <laughs> about my APT class. They love the thumbnail. One of the, uh, shout out to him, uh, shout out to TJ, uh, director of cybersecurity in Nashville, Tennessee, ACA. He mentioned that, yo, I mess with the thumbnail. Mess with it. So aside from that, we, we were talking about like API, not APIs. We were talking about AI, cybersecurity, all that stuff. But I brought up the point that, and hopefully we talk about it, hospitals are getting attacked by APTs. Yep. Hospitals are getting attacked. So how dangerous can that be? As the post, the side mentions right here, personal, financial, medical information. What? Medical information. And what can they do with that? Hold it not only for ransom, but just blackmail you. Hey, better do what I say. I'm going to tell the world you have blink. Oh, you don't want to know? I'm going to tell the world you have blink. Guys, this is serious. I mean, rest in peace to Chad McBoseman. No one knew he, I mean, no, no, not the general public knew he had cancer. You know, unfortunately, he, he's gone too soon. I brought him up because there could be people dealing with stuff like that. On the side, they don't want to notify anybody just for privacy's sake, just to keep their family sane. And you're leaking that stuff. I mean, how despicable are you? For what? You want cool points? You want brownie points? Because you're le you're leaking PPI, personal protected information. I don't understand you hackers. Real real talk. I don't understand. Real talk. All right. No matter where, wherever, sorry, no matter whether they're holding it for ransom or auctioning it off to another digital shade, okay? And I spoke about this last stream about the FBI cracking down on Hive, which, uh, um, if I'm not mistaken, let me just double check. I believe, uh, what was it, Honey Hive? FBI cracked down on Hive. Let me see if I can find that. There we go. Oh, ransom year gang Hive. Yeah. So the FBI cracked down on them earlier this year. Okay, it's a group that stole $130 million in ransom. And FBI seized the whole website and took out, took out the game. Saved over 1,300 victims. It's your businesses. Okay. Let's move on. All right, let's go over some stats. Okay. The average attack costs small to medium businesses 18000 Dude, 18000 that's, whoo. I mean, to us, that's a lot of money. To businesses, like, whoa, that's, that could be uh, licensing for tools. That could be training uh, costs, training budget. That's a lot of stuff right there. That's almost, that's almost two sand certs or possibly three. Think about it. The average, the average attack costs small to medium businesses, 1800 in the U.S. alone, 40% of cyber attacks swindle their victims to the cool tune of $25,000 plus. An inc sorry, an 80% increase over the last year. Golly. Man. 25,000. These hackers are not playing. They're putting the they're putting the freaking keyboard through your throat. Oh, whoa. Hey, hey. Put the key 
bro, put the keyboard down. Give me my money. Hey, hey, hey. Just give me my money. Okay, okay, okay. Here you go, bro. Okay. Dude, these hackers are crazy. And then people want to feel sorry for them when they get caught. Now, there are some hackers who turn to the good side. Shout out to Kevin Mitnick. All right. Felon, black hat hacker, who now became a white hat hacker, owns his own security uh, company, and he's killing it. He's doing good now. See, these, ba these black hat hackers could use their skill for good, but they choose not to. They choose to practice dark arts, all right, and dwell on their dark side. Eventually, light's going to come and blind you. But they don't understand that. They just don't. All right. Let's read on. Do not be so naive as to think that all cyber attacks could cost you is money. Hmm. Yeah, it's just a couple thousand. Mm. We'll get, we're going to see about that. We're going to see it. Oh, I got a great article. It was not planned. I, we'll just talk about it. As the professional sector is so often the target, both your reputation and customer base are at stake. Guys, man, man, I could pull so many articles right now. But just to save time and just to make the stream clean, we're just going to talk about it. Speaking of, now, don't be naive that, oh, I'm just losing money. I'm just losing 18 grand. I'm just losing 25 grand. It's more than that. You're losing your reputation. Prime example, LastPass, a security company who got hacked in a horrible way to the point where the customer base is at stake. You could go on Reddit right now. I could pull up articles right now where people are saying, I'm leaving LastPass. I'm going to Bitwarden. I'm leaving LastPass. I'm doing KeyPass. I'm leaving LastPass. I'm out. Even when I worked uh, as a, a, a former stock analyst, even the business, when we told them about the um, the last pass attack, they're like, "Yo, we gotta, we gotta transition. We gotta get out of here. We're not using this product anymore." So not only did they lose money, the company, they their reputation went downhill because the way that the way it happened was just ridiculous. I, I mean, I don't want to keep bringing it up in the stream. I spoke about it many streams ago. It, it just it's just crazy. And the customer bake is at stake. A lot of these clients, a lot of these businesses, they use LastPass to host their uh usernames and password. And you tell me this is getting breached and leaked and stuff like that. That put that puts other businesses at stake. All right. Which is gonna force uh transfer uh it's gonna force them to find another competitor. That's how it is in business. All right, you guys are not doing this anymore. Let me find another competitor. For example, although this is not related, you know, with the Twitter incident, a lot of people didn't like the way Twitter was moving. What did they do? Uh, they moved to Mastodon. Mastodon was literally got birth just from that. That's a prime example. So what do you think um, was going on with LastPass? People might be looking at other alternatives. Okay. All right, let's read on. As these shadows hone their prowess in performing feats of the darkest digital arts, so too shall we learn to combat them. Man, we could stay on this for we could stay on this for a minute, a cool minute. Who are these shadow dwellers? These are the APTs we talked about last week. They're the ones doing these dark, darkest digital arts, as I say. They're in the dark, dark. Okay, gross darkness. So, how should you combat them? with their own techniques all right and you know that's where red teaming mostly red teaming comes into play they're simulating you know apt hacker and we're going to talk about I, we talked about ap apt's last stream how they move their reason certain attacks or vectors they attack each apt whether it's fancy bear or whatever have their own uh way of attacking their own strategies their own ttp all right so how can you combat them to understand how they move and replicate it so businesses could be prepared for when the actual attack comes in, into play you know so shout out to the red teamers and i know they're stimulating that as we speak right now making sure businesses cybersecurity postures are up to par okay all right all right all right let's move on 
Oops, 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 oops. Learning the arts. Guys, now we're on part two. Learning the arts. We talked about this multiple times. All right. How to learn pen testing. And it gets to the point, you know what? I'm going to have to bring that up. I'm going to have to bring up the advice from the 20 year, 20 plus year cybersecurity manager. Because he, man, he draws some mad game. I'm telling you, some game you guys are using LinkedIn premium email credits to get. I'm telling you, this is some crazy game. And I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it. Don't worry. I got you guys. Now we're going to be learning the arts. Let's get it. <laughs> you guys ready for the dark arts? All right, black magic. All right, let's talk about ethical hackers. These are your pen testers. They perform vulnerability assessments along with other tasks by exercising their skill and knowledge and actually get paid to perform the equivalent of digital break-ins. Guys, I keep telling you, I keep telling you, you know, we open up the stream with the Reddit post. Some people see this as sorcery. What? what is, how's he breaking in? Wait, what? He went through that way? He uploaded a, a, a reverse show? What the what the heck? Wait, he went to the back door? What? Sorcery. Now, other people say, oh, it's just a Nessa scan. That's pretty much it. So you got to have those two type of people. All right. What do they do? They stimulate actual cyber attacks using a broad range of tools and methods. Some of their own creations leaving no stone unturned to unearth cracks in security protocols for network systems and web-based application. That's what they do. They stimulate, all right? Rehearse, regurgitate, copy actual cyber attacks using a broad range of tools. Now, who are they copying? The APTs. The People using dark arts, all right? They're stimulating this attack on businesses so they can better prepare for a real-life attack. A good worldly example of this is, and, you know, let's not get into debate about this. Let's look at a vaccine, for example. All right, what is it? It basically has the virus in it, a little bit of it in it. They put it in you. So you can get that stimulant. So you know what it is. So you can combat it, build up antibodies. So when it actually comes, same things with penetration testers, size red teamers. All right, we're going to break into your system. Boom, boom, bow. All right, here, here's your vulnerabilities. Here's how to remediate it. So if next time, if an APT or a hacker attempts that, it won't be as effective. Okay. So this is the black magic. <laughs> dark arts all right now pen test idea all right <laughs> i don't know if you guys remember uh my <laughs> this was a couple streams ago where we were talking about you know oh pen test history yeah this was pen test history about the uh pen test being you know as old as ancient civilizations think about it you're in a castle on a moat Okay, got a drawbridge. Bring it up. Bring the drawbridge up. Drawbridge is going up. All right, you're in a castle surrounded by a moat. You got alligators, creatures in the, the the lake. You're defensive. Okay, I got my shield. I got you got you got bulwarks. Okay. You got archers on the the battlements. Okay, you're the you got the hey, I'm defensive. I got three six five defender. I'm good. This is where the pen testers come in. The enemies. Now, the enemies knowing this, all right, they have to find a way to what? Penetrate your defenses. Now, there's many ways to do that. The first way that comes into my mind is to manipulate somebody from within, subversion from within. Hmm, sounds like social engineering. Okay? Subversion from within. Get somebody inside. You know, it's close to the king. See if they could poison the king's drink. So when the king feasts, he drops. So the king's gone without a single soldier crossing that drawbridge. That's up, crossing that moat. That's how I think. 
So there's many ways to skin a cat. Ancient pen testing. All right. <laughs> Let's get back. The idea of penetration tests, or pen tests for short, is to probe all possible ways to penetrate any given computer system. To find gaps in security systems before the real hackers get in. Guys, there you go. That's penetration testing in the NESA. That's the whole purpose of penetration testing. You know, it's to the point where, you know, companies must have it for compliance reason. Okay. There's, there's a lot of penetration uh, testing vendors out here as we speak. You got TCM Academy. You got Breach Lock. You got Optiv. Okay, many, many uh, vendors and services that, what, probe all possible ways to penetrate any given computer system. That That's that's pen testing, guys. All possible ways. And, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if we do have penetration testers watching live or on the playback, um, type in the chat, you know, what methods do you use to, you know, probe a system? I know you throw up the Nmap, potentially Nessus. And you got to try those possible ways. Okay, port 80 is open. Let me try that. 22. Okay, let me see if I could get some anomalous login. Okay, FTP. Sweet. Let me see if I could get some files from there. Okay. So on and so on. All possible ways. As a result, pen testers often work on highly, highly confidential and time-sensitive projects. Let me Let me speak on that real quick. Highly confidential. Now, I usually, me personally, as of this recording, 2023, I don't see that many penetration testing jobs requiring security clearance. Could be wrong. I don't see that. I mean, it's a cute. <laughs> we saw what happened with security security clearance, allegedly, with the Pentagon le uh, leak. But, hey, we're going to keep that over there. So they work on highly confidential and, you know, because you're dealing with not only do you have the scope IPs for a company, you're dealing also with internal IPs as well. And you're seeing a lot of vulnerability, vulnerabilities that could be risky. OK. So it, it, it takes a high level of trust. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. But let me go on time sensitive projects. Now, I've never been a penetration tester in my life. Spoke with a few. And the general consensus is, yeah, we got five days to, you know, five days to launch the attack. And then we have two days to write the report. So Monday to Friday, we attack. Monday, Tuesday, do the report. And the report's due on Tuesday, something like that. Okay. Kind of similar to the TCM, um, the PMPT final exam. Five days of penetration testing and the last two days of report writing. Okay, so time sensitive project. Now, actually, I was speaking to one penetration tester. Shout out to her. She mentioned, hey, we, we got so much project back stacked on stack on stack. Some of them have got deadlines. Think about it. You got to penetrate. Um, hey, that sounds wrong. You got to penetrate two comp. Uh, you got to do penetration testing on two companies at the same time, same schedule. That's some time sensitive stuff, but we they need you right here right now. But I got this over here. It's just a lot going on. That's why it's important to have a team of hackers to, you know, lower that workload. Let's read on. So being trustworthy and cool under pressure are important skills. Guys, guys, I can't wait to talk about it if time permits. I mean, damn, we're already like, we got like an hour 15 left. <laughs> time permits. I want to talk about important skills important skills from a cybersecurity manager who's been in the game for 20 plus years says that you should keen in on all right so be trustworthy guys see something critical report on it you know don't leak conf uh, confidential information just basic stuff like that cool under pressure again i've never been a presentation tester i don't know the stress levels that they deal with but you know cool under pressure all right. How the heck? <laughs> Dark. Oh, my bad. Okay, my bad. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're gonna talk about the six dark stones. Yeah, you wanna you wanna practice dark arts? 
you're going to have to get the six dark zones, all right? Having the creative creativity to think on the fly and being organized enough to track, rec record, and report on projects are also good qualities and penetration testing. So there's a lot of good qualities that one should uh, strive to obtain within this field. So we're going to talk about the six dark stones. Guys, remember how I opened up this class. This isn't just, just playing along. It's, I don't do anything demonic or anything crazy like that. Just, just <laughs> chill out. This isn't just. Co we're creating content here. Creating unique content. Okay? Let's talk about these six dark stones, all right? If you want to practice dark arts. Self-analysis. Education. Career path. Professional certification. Honing the craft. Keep current. All right, so we're going to talk about all six of these, starting with self-analysis. But you got to collect them all. If you want to practice dark arts, you want to be mystique, mysterious, you want to be Mr. Robot, collect them all. Let's get to it. Let's talk about the first one, self-analysis. Penetration testing is not for everyone. It requires exceptional problem-solving skills, a dodge determination, dedication to detail, and the desire to remain continually educated on the latest trends in the field. Man, oh. <laughs> Dark arts. Man, I could milk this like a cow. How, how do we want to do this, man? How do we want to do this? <laughs> Guys, penetration testing is not for everyone. This is not. Don't waste your time, as you see in the image right there. Don't waste your time studying for something you don't see yourself doing. That's why I recommend you guys just go put on a box. Do some try hack me, which I don't know if we're going to have time for <laughs> tonight. I got some labs ready to go. Do some try hack me. See if it's right for you. Before you start dropping 1500 on an OSEC uh, exam, OSCP exam attempt, and you just don't even do it. I, try, I know people who purchase exams and vouchers and training because they're hyped up in the moment. And then the next day, mm, I don't feel like it. Do not waste your time. Do a self-analysis. This is the first stone. All right, do a self-analysis. Hey, is this for me? Is penetration really? Why do I want to get into penetration testing? Is it for the money? Do I really care about cybersecurity? And I got a, I got a killer article to bring out <laughs> about this. Do I really care about cybersecurity? I'm not too passionate about it. I mean, it sounds cool. It sounds mystique. You got to ask yourself, really look into yourself. Why do you want to get into penetration testing? It's not for everyone. Now, it requires exceptional problem-solving skills. Guys, and the relationships between employers and employees, it's a business transaction. All right, they hired you for your services and your skill sets, your knowledge, to solve a problem, to add a value to the company and assist their shareholders or clients. All right, you got to have exceptional problem solving skills. All right, you see this vulnerability, you need to offer some remediations. If not, it's just a Nessus scan at the end of the day. You're just notified, you're just showing me, okay, cool. What can I do to fix this? What can I do to better my security postures? Posture. Think about the stuff. A dodge determination. Yep, it takes it takes determination to crank out boxes every once in a while, every day, every once in a while. It takes determin determination to fail the OSCP three times, pass it on your fourth attempt. It takes determination to constantly hone your skills, research the next CVE, look on Twitter, LinkedIn for news. Oh, new GitHub tools. Another thing, dedication to details is very important, guys. You'd be surprised when I'm cranking out these boxes. When I used to crank out boxes, key stuff I'll miss. Oh, what? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Over here. Just so much detail you got to pay. When you when you run dirt, dirt bus, looking through all the directories. Oh, shoot. Oh, what? Wait, oh, there's creds here. There's creds here. Dedication to detail, okay? And a desire to remain continually 
educated on the latest trends, guys, guys. <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready to become a penetration tester? Are you guys ready for this stuff? I don't I don't know if you guys are ready. Continually educate yourself on the latest trends in the field. Now, a lot of people can't do this. A lot of people have responsibilities. Hey, I got a family. Hey, I got a life outside of this. Hey, I got this, like that. I don't want to study all day. Fair. But the ones who are going to kill it in this field or doing the big bucks, they treat this like their life source. And I'm not saying either side's wrong or right. It is what it is. We had, um, I forgot the hacker's name. What was his name? Uh, D Double Dog, Dub Doggy G, who's been hacking since he was a young child, millionaire off of bug bounties. He was obsessed with it. All right. Obsessed with it. So if you want to say educated on the latest trend, and that's why we're going to talk about, if time permits, news articles, new trends. What, what are we seeing in the news right now? What's going on in the security realm? What's going on at InfoSec? How can I stay updated? Got to stay latest on the trend. One question I always ask people is like, how can you be an InfoSec and you don't watch the news? This makes no sense. What, what, what do you mean? What, what do you mean what happened to the last pass? What? You're done. <laughs> You're done. Successful ethical hackers must possess a high level of each of these qualities in order to excel. Excel. There you go right there. Each of these high qualities. Guys, you have it right there. Ah, some good stuff. Guys need to be drinking some water. All right. Let's read that again. Successful ethical hackers must possess a high level of each of these qualities in order to excel. So be honest in the self-assessment before deciding whether a pen testing is an appropriate career. And I'm going to leave this up to you guys. I see people all over Reddit. And I'm not a penetration tester. I'm not. Out. I'm just doing a course on it. All right. Because I think it's, it's mystique. <laughs> okay. You know, people want to learn more of it. I see people on Reddit asking, hey, yo, is pen testing for me? Should I become a pen tester? Should I should I splunk 1500 on learn 2500 on learn one? You have to decide whether pen testing is an appropriate career for yourself. Do your research, guys. I mean, come on, you can't be in the field and not know how to Google. Who was I telling this? I was speaking to somebody earlier about this. There's certain stuff that you could just Google. Hey, um, what's what's the price for Sec Plus, dude? You could Google that. Stop. Cut it out, bro. How, how many how many questions are on that Plus exam? How much is all the CP? You could Google that stuff, guys. What, the, what are we doing? What are we doing? Self assessment before deciding whether pen testing is an appropriate career. I'm going to leave that to you guys. All right, let's go to the next one. This is the next stone. Yeah, we collecting these stones like the Affinity Gauntlet, all right? Snap dark arts, okay? Let's get it, man. Education. At one time, employers were known to hire real-world hackers and convert them from the dark side to work for the good side. There's your Kevin McNick right there. I'm not sure they're doing this today. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, Pom Pom Burn is still locked up. I don't think he ratted out or snitched yet. All right. <laughs> I don't know. But at one time, many employers were known to hire real world hackers and convert them from the dark side to work for the good side. Maybe in a tangent. I don't know if you guys watched the anime um, Chainsaw Man. But think about it, you know, Denji, you know, he just killing demons and all that stuff. And then, uh, <laughs> damn, I, for, uh, I forgot, I forgot the society name. Golly, it's been so long since I watched it. But you had the, was it Demon Society or I'm missing that was uh, Bleach. But you had um, uh, Mikama, Mikama and her team come and recruit him. Hey, we're going to convert you from the dark side because you have, you could have two choices. You become you could become a demon and will kill you, 
Oh, you become a devil hunter and you serve me. So Denji was converted from the dark side to work for the good guys, a devil hunter. Although he's part devil, part human, or both. So I just wanted to bring that up. Because that's rare. I don't I don't see that happening today. Usually these hackers are just getting locked up and that it's a wrap. In recent years, however, college degrees have become near mandatory for penetration testers. Interesting. That's an interesting one. Interesting. Degrees in, you know, being someone who applied to penetration, just to test the market, I do see them asking for at least a bachelor degree, to be honest. Degrees in various disciplines of cybersecurity all provide viable entryways into the field. According to CyberSeek, shout out to CyberSeek, great org, great org to look up. Hey, feeder roles and all that stuff. I mention it a lot throughout my videos. But let's, watch, let's look at the stat from CyberSeek. 11% of pet testers have an associate degree. Wow. 65% earn their bachelor's. Okay. And 24% graduated with a master's degree. Wow. So there you have it right there. So, and this is one thing I never talked about. I mean, it's, it's competitive for those trying to get into the, I mean, cybersecurity in general. I mean, that's no brainer. It's super competitive at the entry level ro a role. Um, I mean, speaking of that, I mean, at the time of this recording, I had a great interview for cyber role and, you know, recruiter hit me up because believe it or not, my YouTube channel sparked uh, her interest. Oh, you're a YouTuber? I'm one too. Oh, shoot, dope. That alone sparked. So hopefully you guys could take a lesson from that. How do you stand out from the competition? Have some projects, have a portfolio, give back to the community, join a Discord, join a volunteer, write blogs, write write-ups, make YouTube videos. There's so many ways to give back into the community. I was talking to a buddy of mine earlier about this little sidebar, you know, asking, hey, how, how do you do it? How do you reach out? How do you, uh, you know, know so many people? How do you talk to them? I don't have, I don't, I don't really have fear in that way of like, I'm not scared to talk to people. If people ghost me, they ghost me. It is what it is. I'm going to move on. All right. But I'm not scared to talk to people. Been in customer service for almost five years. Before this whole pandemic, I was talking to people face to face for four years. People from different backgrounds. So over the internet, that's light work. Over a webcam and a mic, light. I talk to people in real life all, every week. So I just wanted to add that there because it mentioned uh, these penetration testers have degrees, which is great. Don't get me wrong. But if you're trying to come get into the field and you don't have a quote unquote education, you don't have the second stone. You have to gather gather up some pebbles and make something suffice. <laughs> Damn, I'm running out. All right, let's get it. Let's move on. Um, are we done with the slide? We are. Actually, before I go, before I finish the slide, I want to mention. Yeah, all right. I think we're done with this one. Let's move on. Career path. <laughs> There's death in the pot. There are several ways a would-be pen, pen testers can break into the cybersecurity industry. Starting out in security administration, network administration, network engineer, system administrator, or web-based application programming. Always focusing on the security side of each discipline will provide a good foundation for pen testing. Oh, my gosh. This is heavy, guys. I know many penetration testers that came from the blue side. Believe it or not, they came from the blue side for three years in the blue side before they transitioned into pen testing. Main reason, hey, I just found I just found blue team boring. You know, I just found it boring. I don't want to do it anymore. You know, so I want something new. I want that mystique. I want to practice the dark arts. That's what I want. And so they made the transition. OK, but remember how we opened up the class with the Reddit post. The dude came from a uh, security engineer, AppSec engineer, and he transitioned. So that's a lot of that's a lot of ways to move around this you know, cybersecurity realm. 
and I'm not going to regurgitate stuff from my last stream, but guys, look up the top 20 uh, coolest careers in cybersecurity from SANS.org. Look at that list and pick a path, man. Pick a path and just research on it. Uh, chop up, speak with uh, professionals. Shout out to Tanisha William, my, my mentor currently right now. She had me do a, a challenge. I forgot the name of it. But pretty much, hey, talk to five people in the career you aspire to get into. I'm like, okay, bet. Got five people to talk, and I learned more out of each you know person. Eventually, it became redundant. Okay, all right, I'll get the OS. Okay. Oh, get the OS. Oh, get the PMT. Okay, got it. Oh, labs. Okay. So you pretty much have a gist by now. So, yes, if, especially if you're in a feeder role, like security administration, network engineering, dude, and you're getting your OSAP, PMPT, studying, labbing, you're set. You're good. Now, if you're not in a feeder role, which is a role uh, within IT that is before the pen testing role, something within IT, and you're just regular non-IT, it's going to be a little bit difficult. You're going to have to really, really stretch, your, stretch out, really make yourself stand out. Little sidebar, I remember, I love reading OSCP Reddit. I saw this one post of a dentist. Yes, a, a doctor, a, a dentist. He passed the OSCP, I believe, on his third or fourth try. And due to dentists, that wasn't even his career path. He just thought it was interesting. He thought ethical hacking was mystique. I want to learn these dark arts. All right? That's a different kind of route. <laughs> So come on, guys. I know it's mystique. You get that feeling. I had the, f the same rush, too. Whoa, what? Man, I'm hacking. Yo, I feel like Mr. Robot. Man, this is crazy, man. I got this rush in me. Oh, my God, this keyboard. Uh. Dark arts. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on. Third stone. Professional certifications. Hinted at this with the last stone. Employers predominantly want to see a number of professional certification on the resume. Resumes of assurance val validator. God, I read that wrong. Validators. And this is particularly true with more senior positions. And I want to comment on there. I mean, even with entry level positions, you see, and I'm speaking of penetration testing, oh, um, EJPT or PMPT or OSCP or CRTO or CRTP. All right, you're gonna see these certifications on there, especially for juniors, because that's the that's a good way to validate. Okay, do you have skills? Do you have skills? I know you like experience, but what shows your passion? What are you doing to, you know, fix that? And we're gonna talk about that if time permits. Gosh, I'm looking at the clock. We got 28 minutes left, <laughs> and I, I thought this was gonna take like a cool 15, but no, we. We're milking the dark arts, okay? Dark arts. All right, let's read on. Uh, several organizations now offer widely recognized ethical hacking certifications for pen penetration testing. Occupations, sorry, for penetration testing occupation. There are also certified ethical hacker boot camps available to help prepare for a certification exam. Everyone knows about these boot camps. They're all, all over the internet. I don't have to explain that. All right, move on. So that was the third stone. The fourth stone. All right, carving out that stone. All right, <laughs> honing the craft. Becoming an expert in a chosen field is a good idea in any career. Well, for penetration testers, there's a there. Are, oh, whoa, there are the. <laughs> I need to fix my dark speech, all right? I got to learn the language, all right? There are varied ways of standing out from the crowd. We talked about that. Oh, my gosh. Dude, guys, let's read this, man. We, we got to milk this out. Being active. I'm going to just start there. Stop there. Guys, don't just join a Discord chat just to be a lemon or... I mean, if you want to learn, go and learn. But don't complain, oh, no one knows me. All this stuff, who you know, they don't see me putting in this work. Are you active? Are you on Discord dropping knowledge and helping out people asking questions? 
Are you writing blogs and stuff like that? Are you chopping it up with professionals? Are you doing videos or things? Are you active? That's something you got to ask. You, and this is going off a conversation I had earlier. Are you active? Secondly, are you recognized in cybersecurity disciplines? Like what? Do you have a Try Hack Me account? Yes, Try Hack Me is not all that, but do you have a Try Hack Me account? What's your rank? Do you have a Hack the Box account? What's your rank? Do you have certs? Do you have projects? Are you in a community? Are you volunteering? Shout out to Heath Adam. He talked about this in one of his videos. Um, damn, I forgot the title of it. It was a really good video. You something about um, damn. Let me see if I got. I don't know if I can find it right now. He had a really good video. You guys could probably find it on his channel. Talking about you know, stand out. We are noticing people who putting the work. That's how. Shout out to Dewalt. That's how he got hired on his team. Dude was putting in the work. He noticed it and brought brought him on the team. And if, if I'm not mistaken, DeWalt created Pit Mike Alley. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's being, dude, that's being recognized in cybersecurity discipline, GitHub. Such a bug bounty program. So are you guys into that? Now, these are for pen testers listening or feature pen testers. Collecting open source intelligence, OSINT. Another one right there. Develop and you guys need to start using OSINT just in general. I mean, come on. one little OSINT tip I use. Okay, let's say, how can I word this? Okay, chopping it up with a buddy, blah blah blah. You're a penetration tester. What's your name? Cool, I'll do OSINT, look up the company, and okay, where is he? Look up the position. Okay, got it. Check out the hiring. Okay, good. I actually did that recently. Ironically, this is a different uh, Discord chat. One of the my buddies, he applied for like a sales job with this company. This is when I got laid off uh, a couple weeks ago. I'm like, oh shoot, okay, I'm applying for any. I'm applying for anything right now. I came from sales for four years in customer service. Applied for it. The same company he was talking about in the uh, Discord chat. A week later. I had a, a interview. That's some OSINT. Although that's not cybersecurity, it's OSINT. I'm just collecting open source free information freely on the internet, freely available, and using it to my advantage. You know, I like quote unquote lurking or looking around. Okay, learning from people's mistakes. Okay, you did that. To get up with that. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. Oh shoot, you went to that program. Okay, sweet. Oh, you got that cert. Very popular. Oh, perhaps I go with that. Use OSINT, guys. Come on. I mean, there's actually courses on OSINT to bring up TCM Academy. They have a course on OSINT alone. Learn how to use it, guys. You can use OSINT to find professionals on LinkedIn, on Twitter, whatever. Nice. Developing proprietary attack programs. All right. This is getting pretty advanced. We'll all get pen testers recognized among peer groups. And that's the main thing. You want to make sure your peers see you as your peers. All right. We have a, a cybersecurity discord chat. All right. I link multiple times throughout these uh, streams. Just go back to previous streams. See if it's in the comment section or discord. Check it out. We have a bunch of penetration testers in there. Surrounded by their peers. Chopping it up. Putting game on people. Hmm. I think that hopefully my I think that was the no that was the fifth stone I, th I believe this is the last stone sixth stone all right keep current all right and we're gonna break this down keep current the sixth stone dark arts as mo as with most cybersecurity career paths it is vital to remain current with what is happening in the industry keeping skills and knowledge up to date with all the latest trends in programming and network security, ever-changing hacking techniques and security protocols, properly exploited vulnerabilities and anything else happening in the cybersecurity industry. Guys, this encompasses everything. 
as I opened up the stream earlier today, how can you be in the field and you don't watch the news? That that, that makes no sense. It makes no sense. And you're a consultant? Come on, bro. And you're trying to get into the field? You don't know what's going on? You, you Your company could have been hacked. You, you wouldn't even know. Keep up. Professionally and knowledgeably. This is what all cybersecurity career paths. Hopefully, when I do, if I do get back into the field, I mean, I'm keeping up even when I'm out the field right now. Always got to keep up, looking at the trends. We, for example, right now, we know there's a um, at the time of this recording, the market's rough. Hiring freeze, allegedly fake job posting, crazy <laughs> uh, requirements, entry level five years for CISP. How is going on in here? Keep up. All right. Now, oh wow, we're damn already on section three. <laughs> Observe the darkness. Man, we got like 20 minutes left. <laughs> Whoa. Observe the darkness. Yes. It's important to see dark clearly in darkness. What is this talking about? Keep current. So we're gonna go over some cybersecurity news. All right. And just to see what's going on in the market right now, just to make sure you guys are current and stuff like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna help you guys out. Don't worry. We're gonna help you guys out. So let me actually load up this. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's see. Uh yeah, we're gonna load up a couple articles and then take a look at them. All right. And hopefully we have time to review those Reddit articles I had to close out yeah i don't think we're gonna get to the lab i'm gonna be honest guys we're not gonna get to the lab all right i'm gonna start with this one shout out to um i think it was caleb shout out to caleb caleb shitwood um he brought this up in our cybersecurity chat at my current employment and this is stemming off my apt stream uh let's see right here <laughs> Shout out to him. So, and this is off the micro. I should I should start off with um. I should start off with the Microsoft one. He dropped this in the chat. He dropped it in the chat earlier this. Oh yeah, earlier this week. Check it out. And we talked about this in the APT thing. I don't know if we talked about this, but this is new. Today, Microsoft is excited to announce that we are shifting a new threat actor naming taxonomy aligned to the theme of weather the complexity scale and volume of threats is increasing dark arts driving the need to reimagine not only how microsoft talks about threats but also how we enable customers to understand those threats quickly and with clarity and with the new taxonomy we intend to bring better context to customers and security researchers that are already confronted with an overwhelming amount of threat intelligence data it will offer a more organized, memorable, and easy way to reference adversary groups so that the organizations can better prioritize threats and protect themselves. Simply put, security professionals will instantly have an idea of the type of threat actor they are up against just by reading the name. Now, before we read down to the name, this won't make sense if you guys didn't come from the APT class. I'm telling you. Because if you guys came from that class, we talked about how... We talked about how... Dude, one cyber group could have 50 leather names, all right? Russian bear or fancy bear could be called APT this or that, that, or bear. five names for one group. So Microsoft noticed this, and now they're, you know what? We're shifting to a, a hopefully universal tax, taxonomy. So this is it right here. So now Russia is Blizzard. No more bears, fancy bears, or hence that bears. I know, uh, what was it? China was, was it China? That was Panda. Now it's Typhoon. North Korea, North Korea Sleet. Iran Sandstorm. Hmm. Microsoft, what are you doing, man? Uh, Storm, Groups in Development. Tempest, Financially Motivated. Tsunami, Private Sector, Offensive Actor. Flood, Influence Operation. Man, 
dude, how do you guys feel about this stuff? Drop a comment below, dude. This is some crazy stuff. <laughs> dude, this is a long article. We're not going to go into it. Um, let me see. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, there we go. We talked about the nation states. Uh, all right, let's let's read this real quick. I'll read this sentence, and we're going to look at the, the, the chart below. This helps Microsoft threat intelligence teams fully understand the what of an attack, make assessments on the why, then forecast and implement protections for where an attacker might go next. Our vision is that this new naming model helps our customers and the industry to move to a more proactive approach to defense. Oh, I got. Oh, I got to talk. I got. I got to read this part right here. I got to read this part right here because I, I, like I was telling Caleb, dude. This many other. You got men dying. They have their own uh, naming convention. You got CrowdStrike, their own naming convention. We realize that other vendors in the industry also have unique naming ta taxonomy, representing their distinct view of threats based on their intelligence. However, there are often overlaps or close alignments with tracked actors. And keeping track of these names can be challenging for defenders. I, I concur. Microsoft Threat Intelligence is committed to helping customers understand threats, no matter which naming taxonomy they are familiar with. Therefore, we will strive to also include other threat actor names within our security products to reflect these analytical overlaps and help customers make well-informed decisions. This is pretty much a follow-up from last stream, guys. What do you guys think about this? This is this is interesting. I did not know about this um, from last stream, even though this actually came out before I filmed it, which is interesting. I didn't even realize this. And yeah, there we go. This goes over. So nation states are. Oh. Mm, okay, nation states, Iran. I don't think I saw Lebanon on Lebanon rain, North Korea sleep, Russia blizzard. Wow, this is some dope stuff. Ah, okay, okay, okay. That's that article. Um, and then <laughs> now this came out today as I'm recording this, April 27th. The cyber, and this is from give the credit, Robert Lemos. All right. The cyber attackers conduct an espionage operation on behalf of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard groups have been known by a variety of names. Depending on the threat intelligence group, the different vendors, investigating the attack, Magic Hound, APT35, Charming Kitten, Cobalt Illusion, TA453, and Phosphorus. <laughs> Dude, that's all the same names for the one group. Oh, so all different names for one group. Man, last week, Microsoft changed its naming convention for the threat groups. Doing away with all cap names derived from auto atomic elements such as acnium and adopting a two name scheme based on a storm terminology such as Aqua Blizzard, the Russian related group formerly known as acnium. The company adopted the new convention to indicate the interest of the sponsor of the attack group. Blizzard for Russia, Typhoon for China, Tempest for financially motivated actors, for example, in the same way that CrowdStrike. And SecureWorks create their names for the group threat groups. And guys, if you come from the, came from the last stream, we talked about how cross like name their groups. All right, so we're not gonna go down this article. Oh, cozy bear, gosh. Oh wait, is this the? Oh, okay, okay. This is a guitar right here. Can I zoom in? No, I can't. You guys not be might not be able to see this, but it talks about um. These are all the vendors, and this is all their different names for the same threat. Ah. Uh... That's dope. Ah, oh, that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. I like it. I like it. Helix Cunit. <laughs> that's another article I could pull up where it talks about um these cyber gangs. They have just weird names, strange names. I'm gonna see if I can find it real quick. This is ad hoc. You see how well the stream went by? It took me like an hour or something to prepare. It went by really well. I'm enjoying. I'm, I'm learning, guys. I'm learning. Uh, let's see. Cyber Game Naming Convention is silly. Let's see if I can find it. If I can't find it. Ah, got it. Got it. Let's get it. <laughs> this is from Wired. 
uh, by Andy Greenberg. Uh, let's close this off. No, we don't want that. Hacker groups' names are now absurdly out of control. Guys, do you, do you see a theme here? You see why Microsoft had to shift the naming taxonomy? We'll, we'll see. Pumpkin Sandstorm. <laughs> Spandex Tempest. Tempest. Charming Kitten. Is this really how we want to name the hackers wrecking havoc worldwide? These are the people practicing dark arts. And they're Charming Kittens. They're pumpkin sandstorm. Wizards. <laughs> we need to have a witch hunt in this thing. All right. Hackers, particularly state sponsor ones, focus focus on espionage and cyber war, war and organized cyber criminals exploiting networks worldwide for profit are not pets. They wreck businesses, sow chaos, disrupt critical infrastructure, support some of the world's most harmful militaries and dictate uh, dictatorships and help those governments spy and oppress innocent people worldwide. So why, when I write about these organized hacker groups as a security reporter, do I find myself referring to them with cute pet names like Fancy Bear, Refined Kitten, and Sea Turtle? Guys, this is what I'm talking about. You need to, you need to watch the APT stream. I'm telling you, this is what I'm talking about. I didn't mention this in the stream, but this is how, and it's kind of like psychological because you're like, oh, Fancy Bear hacked me. What? Wait, what do you mean? A kitten? Ha oh, Charming Kitten hacked me. Dude, come on. Stop playing. Tell your little brother get off the get off the P PC. Tell him stop script kidding it. No, Charming Kitten hacked me. Fancy Bear hacked It doesn't even sound right. It doesn't sound intimidating. As, oh, shoot. Tempest or Storm. Or Typhoon. Whoa. Okay, I better watch out. This, this is a good article, man. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. So that's it on that. Man, we got nine minutes. Let me see if I can rush through these uh, couple articles to get you guys updated on the news. Cyber attack disrupt Lowell City government. Shuts down computers. Uh, looks like they got a video on this. Play this real quick. That will load. It might not load, which is okay. Yeah, it's not good. Oh, is that an ad? No, we're good. We're not going to watch any ad. Lowell, the city of Lowell is alerting res residents to a cyber attack that impacted the municipality. Uh, sorry, municipalities' computer system starting earlier Monday or early Monday. We realized Monday morning around three to three to five a.m. that there was a breach," said city manager Tom Golden. Godin says the phones, emails, and other systems are down as a result. And as you see, this is the Twitter account right here. So that's just an example. We don't have enough time to read the whole article. But looks like they got breach. All right. Shut down computers. So potentially a distribution of service attack. Interesting stuff. Another article, and this actually it actually stems from a this is one article about, uh, let me see if I can find it. Old Cisco routers with information. I don't know why that popped up in my mind. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Let me see if I can find it in the news. Uh, da, 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 da. No, I can't find it. I remember I was watching this, uh, reading this one article about People throwing away their or returning their Cisco hardware, and they didn't delete the table, the route table, or anything. They still have information on it. So I think this video, uh, this article is gonna go over it. Abandoned files can destroy your business. Yep. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Do you own your own business? Do you hire loads of employees, but they come and go on a regular basis? Be careful. They usually leave a lot of stuff behind. The amount, the amount of this kind of orphan data without clear ownership or maintenance can cause a lot of damage all right oh speaking of layoffs man we gotta talk about layoffs real quick layoffs are in layoffs are in vogue these days in the u.s especially in the tech se sector layoffs dot five we're gonna go, go to the website real quick and if you guys don't know or haven't been up to date i have recently been laid off like a couple of weeks ago but i'm still surviving got a w2 and got like a 1099 so i'm still straight but looking forward to get back into cybersecurity soon. So we are good over here. You guys better prepare. All right, you've been warned. 
have a uh, stream income, have some other sources of income, prepare, stack up, you know, the rest. If you go to my YouTube channel, go on my community tab. I have a layoff guide, a literally a layoff proof guide. It doesn't mean you won't be laid off. There's no such thing as that. There's at will employment. So you could get terminated for any reason or for no reason. You guys need to be careful and, you know, stack up some bread and have multiple sources of income. Don't pull all your eggs in one basket. All right, just wanted to drop that game real quick. Oh, we didn't even get a chance to drop, talk about the, damn, I guess we might have to say that for the next stream. It is what it is. So, so far, I wanted to bring this up. Um, 184,000 employees has been laid off since 2023. So, in four months, that's some crazy stuff. Dang, Red Hat. Wow. Where's the number? Right? Damn, 8,500 Dropbox. Club, wait, Clubhouse? Wow. Wait, why did I even go here? I forgot. We were just reading a good article. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, we were right here. Layoffs are in vogue these days in the U.S. That's the proof of it, especially in the tech sector. Layoffs.fyi, a website that has been monitoring tech layoffs since March 2022. Sorry, March 2020 has been compiling data indicating that approximately 174,000 employees have been laid off by around 600 tech companies since the beginning of the year. The firing spree is accompanied by the so-called great resignation. Gosh, you guys remember that? Was that last year or two years ago? The great resignation. This term describes the record number of people leaving their jobs. Over 50 million American workers voluntarily, voluntarily quit their positions in 2022. Man, was that in 2020? It felt like 2021. Was that in 2022? Wow. Great resident. I remember that. Now it's like the flip side. Now it's employers laying people. That's that's crazy, bro. According to job openings and labor turnover surveys data. All right, all right, all right. I want to get to right here. However, these workers also leave behind an enormous trove of dark data, dark arts, <laughs> information collected, processed, and stored during regular business activities, but not used for other purposes. This is dangerous, says Data Adobe. A company focused on unstructured data management. It adds that the amount of such orphan data is growing at an unprecedented rate and creating multiple security compliance and reputational risk. Threat actors are ready to grab the chance and sow more chaos. All right. So you guys pretty much get to get the gist and stuff like that. Okay. You know, certain uh, my computer's updating right now, my work computer. Oh, it's already 11. It's late. I better close the stream and get prepared for tomorrow. Um, but yeah, you guys see the gist right there. Abandoned files, abandoned computers with data on it, and you're reselling it and stuff like that. It could cause havoc. Um, damn, I had a lot more articles to go over. Since Sam's went over five most dangerous cyber attacks, 2023. You got SEO boosted attack. Uh, I'm gonna read this real quick. Just as regular business businesses utilize search engine oper- optimization to boost rankings of certain terms for the sake of marketing their product and driving traffic to revenue ge- generating sites, the bad guys also turn to SEO. All right, so you guys pretty much get the gist on that. Malvertising, all right, advertising malware. Let's see, developers as a target. Huh, let's see, I'm not sure what this attack is. Mm, interesting attack. Oh, offensive uses of AI. Interesting. So. Actually, we were talking about um, this in the chat earlier today. You know, do not put any personal or proprietary or company information within the AI. Chat AI is not good. Not good. All right. And let's see. Let's see. Chat GBT and weaponizing AI for social engineering. Interesting. How will this work? Um, let me see. What her son. Pro- oh, using chat GBT to write convincing text with emoji that make them sound like a nine year old. To get her son to tell her address. Wow, that's some crazy stuff. That's some crazy stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, we don't we don't have time to cover the rest of the article. Um, we got through enough. Stop screen sharing. Uh, yeah, as you guys can see, my work computer right there. You guys see the company I work for. I mean, if you have off, off you know, OSINT skills, you could find that out real quick. Um, but yeah, great stream, great stream. I enjoyed it. Pretty cool topic. I mean, I just whipped this up within hour 20 minutes and dude, it went well. <laughs> it went well. I even had backup content as well, just in case, you know, I finished early. So 
glad I didn't have to get to that. But no, this was a great stream about dark arts, you know, digital dark arts, pen testing and all that stuff. We, we talked about a lot of stuff. I think the stream went well. I'd like to hear you guys' feedbacks in the comment section below. Let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, feel free to reach me out. Oh, before I close, I want to give credit to the sources. Uh, right here, sources for the information and everything. So appreciate it, guys. You guys have a good one and appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Take care.